Hey guys, and welcome to Overland and Zed. You join me in the middle of the field in the Southern Wire Upper somewhere. Beautiful day. We've been running the Felden rooftop tent for three years now, and um, thought it was probably a fair time to go through what I love about rooftop tents, what, you know, some of the compromises you have to make when you're running one. Like, these are not specific to the Felden. This is for any rooftop tent. And um, yeah, like, long story short, obviously we've still got it. I love it. Thanks to our patrons for help making this possible. Join the Patreon crew today and help support future videos. I will just state this whole video, you know, the internet is a strange place where people are very passionate. This is based on my opinions on how we travel. We're on the move every single day. We very rarely stay anywhere for more than a night. And I understand that people travel in different ways and for them, rooftop tent may not be the correct solution. So up to us to rooftop tent. Let's jump into it, eh? One of the things I absolutely love about the rooftop tent is, in our case at least, it's always ready to go. I've got bedding in there, I've got pillows, everything's packed in it when the tent's folded down. Basically, I can chuck a bag of clothes in the car and hit the road. I know that I've got everything I need in the tent ready to go. And it also means that when we're out and about, we don't have sleeping bags and pillows in the back of the truck. Like, there is, there is not a lot of room in there, and getting that stuff out of the cab is awesome. Another thing I love is being able to camp anywhere. Yeah, so setting up a tent, you need fairly level ground and it needs to be not too rocky, not too sticky, sticky, and not covered in sticks. And you know, you've got to find kind of the correct ground. Like this field probably would do all right. The rooftop tent though, as long as you can get pretty much level, you're good, you can set up anywhere. I recently camped in a riverbed and there is no way that you could have got a standard tent or even a swag, to be honest, there. It was too uneven and too rough, and there were too many sharp rocks around. You know, we have, on the very odd occasion, when we had to camp somewhere pretty rubbish, stayed at, um, like, proper holiday park things, where you park on a concrete pad, and you have very little room. It's designed for a camper van, basically, and being able to set that up is awesome. Another thing that I absolutely love is being up high. You get heaps of wind flow through those windows. You get a cool view if you set up at a cool spot and you're kind of up and away from everything. You know, like if, you're, if you've ever camped on a beach, you'll know how annoying sand can be in your tent. Yeah, it still gets up there, but it's nowhere near as bad as if you're on the ground and it's all blowing in and causing, you know, sandy sleeping bags and stuff, because there's nothing worse than that. So, compromises of having a rooftop tent? Um, there are a few. Like, I won't deny that. As with everything in life, there are compromises. Probably the biggest compromise is you do have a lot of weight up high. I've kind of mitigated that by getting the tent lower on the tub there, but you still know that it's there. You know, chuck it on a wagon and they're a little bit hard to get to and you do have to climb around and you know, a bit of work to unfold and fold them up. Yeah, I know that I was just saying that um, they're easy to set up anywhere, but you do have to be able to find flat ground. You know, you can obviously chuck max tracks or sticks or something under the tires just to level the vehicle out, but it can be a bit of a pain just to try and get it nice and level. And the number of times I've gotten out and gone, oh no, that, that's not good at all, and had to sort of wiggle back and forth and you know, try and get it all lined up. Obviously, if you use your vehicle daily, you probably don't want your tent on it all the time. Um, and they're heavy, so taking it on and off every time you get home and back from an adventure can be a bit of a hassle. If you're the type of person who stays at a campsite for a couple of days and you need your vehicle, they're probably not the best solution for you. Like you will be packing it up and unpacking it every single day. And the few times I've done that, that's fine. I'm happy to make that compromise. But I realize that for some people that is way too much of a compromise. One complaint though that I've never understood is people going on about, oh, you know, I get to camp, I set it up and then I want to go out for a drive. Don't set it up. I don't know, it seems like a very weird one to me. Like, I don't set up the tent until I'm sure that I'm done for the day, which is normally when we get to camp because it's like 7.30, 8 at night, I'm finished, I want to have some dinner and go to bed. Um, yeah, I don't know, it just seems like a very strange uh, complaint to me, but hey, that's me. You know, one massive upside is the setup and pack down time. Like, you know, as it sits right now, that took me 
two, three minutes to get completely ready to go. Packing it up is a couple minutes more. Like, it's not hard, and you know, especially I've got easy access because it is low, but I love now to get to camp and just basically go whoop, and we're done. I have to think about pegs and hammers and poles, and yeah, it, it is just so easy to flip it on, chuck the two spring poles in the end, poop on, guy rips down, done. So is a rooftop tent right for you? Well, you ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, and probably the primary one, is is buying a rooftop tent gonna stop you from going on adventures, or can you make do with the tent that you've already got? You know, they are not cheap, I, I can't deny that, and you know, even the cheaper ones are still a lot of money compared to something that just goes on the ground. Yeah, if it's gonna stop you from going on an adventure, it's probably not the product for you. Unless, and this is a big unless, unless you are super passionate about them. Like, I get that, I love this thing, and when we bought the Felden, I just spent all my money on my truck, and I had nothing left, but I made it work, and I'm glad I did. Like, I love this thing, and it's kind of made it so easy to go out on adventures. Yeah, as I've mentioned before, like, if you're the type of person who gets to a campsite and stays there for three, four, or five days, like, Rift tent might not be the go for you either. Like you're probably better off with a ground tent or a swag or something that you can leave set up so that you're not packing and unpacking a tent every single day. The reasons to buy one though, like you know, you've got everything you need. At least with the Felden, everything is in there, packed away, ready to go. You got sleeping bags, pillows, I keep clothing and books and all that sort of stuff in there. Yeah, it's super comfortable. We did three and a half weeks down south every single night in the tent. We've never managed to do quite a long stint like that before. And we were still full of beans at the end of it. Yeah, it just makes such a difference having somewhere comfortable to sleep. You know, in my opinion, they're real easy to pack away and set up. I have watched people, you know, fight swags, get them back in their bags, and then up on the roof racks and stuff. I think this is way better, and it's a huge reason why I wanted a rooftop tent. When you're looking around at the various different tents on the market, you'll see heaps ranging from, you know, sort of thousand bucks right up to five, six grand for a hard shelled aluminium tent. For the soft shelled ones at least, you know, they all look fairly similar online. In photos, it's, it's hard to get an appreciation for how much thought goes into the more premium products. You know, if it's something you're gonna use once or twice a year and keep it for a couple of years, you've gotta decide whether or not it's worth spending the money on you know, a premium tent. We use this all the time, like all the time. It lives on the truck. I don't know how many nights we've done it. So for me, it was only a product that was gonna last, had full New Zealand support, and I thought, personally, it was worth spending a little bit more to get premium product. Now, there are hard shell tents on the market now too, and I would love to try one of those. And yeah, they, I like the ones that open up like that. And then even easier to set up, a bit heavier and a little bit, smaller is not the right word, it's a bit more cozy as they are. Like a soft shell tent's got a heap of room inside, a hard shell one has a little bit less just by the nature of its design. So yeah, Rooftop Tents, you know, it's been three years and obviously I love it. It's still up there. If I didn't, it'd be gone by now because, you know, it's a lot of extra weight and a lot of extra drag that's carried around on the back of the truck every single day. I don't take it off. But for me, it encourages me to get out there and explore more. Like, I don't like being uncomfortable when I'm camping and if I am, I'm just not going to go. Like, to be completely honest, camping is not why I do this. Camping is a means to get out there and explore and anything for me that makes that easier is a win. So, you know, I love this thing. I, I rave on about them. I tell everybody who asks me that, you know, if, it's, if it matches your style of travel, then yes. Yeah, as I mentioned, it's not for everyone, and that's cool. Like, you know, I know people are very, very passionate about rooftop tents and camping in general. Anyway, thanks heaps for watching. Hopefully that's kind of been a mile high view of my thoughts on a rooftop tent after three years. We're keeping it, I love it. I'm not sure what we're gonna do now with the kid. He doesn't fit in there with us, but that's a problem for another day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and check out our Patreon page. Behind the scenes, everything first, all the random things that we're up to. There's some cool stuff happening there that never makes it out to kind of our general social media and YouTube. Lots of short little clips of things that I'm doing. Um, yeah, it, it's great fun. Like five bucks a month will get you all access. I've just launched a second tier now, so 10 bucks a month will get you Navigator Pro and full access to Patreon. Seems pretty, pretty good value to me. Anyway, catch you next time on Overland and Zed. Woo!